Hi, and welcome back to Jeff and Joe's Puerto Rican Kitchen, where we show you how to make easy, authentic Puerto Rican recipes. So far, we've made some great dishes on the channel. We've made rice and beans, tostones, mofongo, and bistec. And as we've highlighted, these dishes combine to make the perfect Puerto Rican dinner that you can share with your loved ones and friends. And today, we're going to put the proverbial icing on the cake to this complete dinner. Dessert. And there are a lot of desserts to choose from, but probably the most popular and our personal favorite is flan. This caramel flavored dessert is the perfect marriage between sweet and creamy. It's somewhere between a cheesecake and a creme brulee with a dash of custard. And besides the fact that flan is oh so delicious, this recipe is a special one for me for two reasons. First, as all of my friends know, my favorite thing to do in the kitchen is bake. So I'm very excited that I finally get to do that with all of you on this channel. And second, this is the first recipe that I learned to make with my mom when I was growing up. And although I've made some tweaks to the preparation, what we're going to be making today is basically the same thing that my mom has been making for decades. Because as all of you know, mama knows best. But we don't want to keep you waiting, so let's get cooking. The first step in making flan is to prepare the caramel. Add the sugar in an even layer to a saucepan over medium-high heat. Let it sit for a couple of minutes until the sugar at the bottom starts melting. Once the sugar at the bottom starts melting, stir it with a heat-resistant spatula, making sure to scrape down the sides and the bottom, repeating this process continuously. After a couple of minutes, the sugar may clump up and form hard, rock-like chunks. Don't worry, all the sugar will eventually melt. You may want to press down on the larger clumps to break them down faster. Continue stirring constantly until the caramel is an even golden brown. It usually takes me 5 to 7 minutes. While still hot, pour the caramel into a deep 10-inch tube pan. Hold the pan with oven mitts. It's going to get really hot. And tilt the pan from side to side until the caramel coats all sides of the pan, reaching approximately 1 inch up the sides. We decided to use a tube pan because it cooks faster. When selecting your baking pan, keep in mind that the pan will need to fit inside a tall baking tray while we bake it as you will see later in the video. Once you finish preparing your pan, set it aside to cool. While you wait for this to cool, go ahead and prepare the flan mixture. I like to use a blender for this step. If you don't have one, you could use a food processor or hand mixer. Start by adding the cream cheese, evaporated milk, and sweetened condensed milk to the blender and blend until smooth. This will take approximately two minutes you want to make sure that the cream cheese is well incorporated and there are no clumps to ensure a smooth finish to your flan. Once the mixture is smooth, add the eggs, milk and vanilla to the blender. You want to add these ingredients, particularly the eggs, after you have blended in the cream cheese in order to minimize the time you're beating the eggs. As you beat the eggs, the egg white proteins will uncurl and trap air in your mixture, taking away from the dense, rich texture you want. Blend your mixture until just incorporated, approximately 15 seconds. Now you're ready to bake the flan. Turn on your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, pour the mixture into the tube pan. You may hear some cracking noises as you're pouring the mixture in. 
This is completely normal. It is just a cold mixture reaction with the warm caramel. As with most custards, we need to bake our flan in a bain marie, which is just a fancy name for a pan filled with water. Place a large, deep baking pan into the oven. The pan should be large enough to fit the tube pan and also tall enough to cover at least half of the tube pan. Start by adding hot water to the baking pan until the water is about a quarter of the way up the side. Then place the tube pan inside the baking pan. Add more water to the baking pan until the water level is about halfway up the side of the tube pan. Be really careful when adding the water, making sure not to splash any water into the flan. Bake for 90 minutes or until the top of the flan looks firm and it softly jiggles in the middle when shaken. Remove from the oven and let it cool to room temperature. Once it reaches room temperature, place it in the fridge for at least 12 hours. To unmold, run a knife along all the edges of the tube pan including the middle. I've used a butter knife but you can use any knife that you like. Lightly shake the mold to make sure that the flan is loose. Next, grab your serving tray. The tray should be at least an inch larger than the tube pan. Put the tray container on top of the baking mold and flip the flan onto the tray. If the flan is still stuck to the pan, gently knock on the bottom of the pan. If your flan is still stuck, try dipping the bottom of the pan in hot water for 20 to 30 seconds, loosening up some of the caramel. Pour any remaining caramel in the mold on top of the flan. And there you go. Now you're ready to try your flan. This dessert is very rich and small pieces can go a long way. This recipe will serve between 12 to 16, but I would totally understand if you don't want to share. And there you have it, flan. Super easy and yet, Hopefully super yummy. Mm. Everything we promised. Brings me right back to my childhood. Just great memories of me in my kitchen in the kitchen with my mom. It's just great. Best part of, of a flan is that you can really adjust like how sweet you can make each bite by adding more or less caramel to each bite. So Plenty of caramel left in the dish if you want more of mm -hmm. it. Mm. Well, there you have it. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Please support us. Um, we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe, if you would like, share the word on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever type of social media you're on. Just show us your love and uh, tell us what you want to see next. Yeah, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that. Um, let us know if there's any recipe you would like us to try out. We would love to feature it um, very soon. And until then, we'll see you next week for the next episode of Jeff and Joe's Puerto Rican Kitchen. Bye.